You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. MyAx is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the Ever Volatile Network, upon which so many of you are binging these days. Glad to see so many of you folks having a good time, enjoying the old Vol Views. Ran to someone this week who told me they listened to the show while hiking on the weekends. I said, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever floats your volatility boat. We're here to help you out. Of course, if you like what you hear, keep rating and reviewing it on whatever platform you get the show. This show's been running for over a decade now. We know that. Big 500 episode Palooza just a few weeks ago. But of course, uh, these recent rash of listeners, of course, they're coming in driven in part by a lot of your ratings and reviews. So if you like what you hear, keep rating and reviewing. The new stuff really does help drive new listeners to the show. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you want to have an extra dose of fun, like let's say for today, you don't want your day to end after volatility views, you want to keep on going with a little bit of great content, like let's say options oddities, then head on over to theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. That's the place to go. You can join us there on the dark side there as you have fun with the club. Of course, pro Q&As, get two exclusive shows a week, you get live stuff throughout the week, you get, of course, great giveaways and a whole bunch more. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Does whatever you do, do not go to theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. That is not for you. That is only for other people, not for you. Do not go there. Slash Secret Club. <laughs> let's see who's joining us on the show today. First, let's go out to the southern volatility mecca known as Austin, where we are joined once again by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the show, sir. Hey, good to be here. I'm glad uh, it's quite the day, huh? Yeah, you picked a good one. You picked a good one to slot in on here today a lot to sink our teeth into and also joining us holding down the my axe hot seat this week has been on in a while he is luke rabari the ceo over there at equity armor investments luke welcome back to volatility view sir mark thank you very much glad to be back what a day to be back huh what a day to be back we're going to get into all the fun that's happening right now in a second but you haven't joined us i do believe this is your first time joining us uh, this year on the network. So give us a quick catch up of what's cooking in the land of equity armor, as well as 
Obviously, these have been incredibly topsy-turvy markets. Uh, Catch us up on your thoughts on the incredible market tumult we've seen this year up until this week, sir. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's the first time in 2022. Uh, Obviously, we trade vol in uh, several different manners. We have a couple of mutual funds that we trade vol in. We have a couple of CTA programs. And, you know, I think a lot of people have said, hey, we were expecting some volatility this year. We were as well. But the problem is you never know where it's coming. And one of the things we've done this year is, as we do every year, is look at the volatility in other asset classes. And we've coined this phrase, volatility from one asset class will always bleed into another. The question is how much and how fast. So uh, looking at the FX markets, the currency markets, the um, fixed income markets, commodity markets, we knew some ball was coming and uh, we try to position ourselves using different instruments, which I'm sure you'll talk about today. We shall do so. So let us commence it. It is time for the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. Everybody, welcome to the Volatility Review, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down the week that was, and indeed still is, from a vol trading and trending and analysis and unusual activity, all sorts of fun perspectives. And yeah, we got one today. Listen, we caught a good one today, at least from a vol perspective. I guess it depends on your market perspective. If you're a hardcore bull, maybe turn this one off. Not really the show for you out there today. Of course, coming into showtime, all the major indices are pretty much off about 2%, if not a little bit more. S&P off about 2.1%. NASDAQ actually about the exact same percentage, which is rare. Usually we see one of those two outpacing each other. Usually it's the NASDAQ leading the dance. Both of them off about 2.1% as we're kicking off the show. The Dow off closing on 2%, about 1.9%. But we really got everybody spooked out there in the S&P today is, of course, we traded below the closing low for June. Of course, everyone thought that was the low for the market. Well, maybe not everyone. I was a little dubious. A lot of people were dubious. Maybe we had some more room to run on the downside. But a lot of people were hoping that that was, of course, the low for the year and the rebound was in, the rally was in. Certainly, we did see a lot of aggressive upside well north of the 4,000 level. But alas, for all you bulls out there coming into showtime now, in the 3,600 range again. So remember, not that long ago, people were talking about, man, if we break through 3,900 again to the downside, look out below. And now we are well south of 3,900, 3,680 or so. When we kicked off the show in the S&P, let's see, how low did we get this one? I think it was about 3665. Yeah, that was pretty much the, the low. Actually, 3664 was the low for this morning. So, yeah, obviously a lot of folks, once you break through those key psychological levels, a lot of folks tend to get spooked. That means Vol has been kicking it into a little bit higher gear. We're seeing a handle we haven't seen in quite some time in the Vol space. Listeners, a 30 handle, a 30 handle in spikes and in VIX when we kicked off the show. They had just ticked over that. As the show was commencing, Spikes was at about a 30 and a quarter when we kicked off the show up a little over three, about 3.1 points. And VIX Cash at about a 30 and a half, up about exactly three points from where we were this time last week. Our old friend Vol of Vol, VIX, it was hanging out actually down, not that long before showtime. But as we saw this Vol starting to ratchet up into the start of the show, we saw VIX ratcheting up as well. It was at about a 99 exactly when we kicked off the show. It's up about three points and just within spitting distance of that triple digits level that you know people listening to this show for a while we spent pretty much the entirety of the pandemic era until this year north of triple digits in vbix listeners so we are threatening it yet again intriguing times speaking of vol of vol our old friend the viking aka v spikes at about a 109 when we kicked off the shuts up about a little over one about one and a quarter if you still don't have a good sense of a frame of reference for the viking listeners Its range has been a low of about 89 and a half that was set back in the end of July, July 29th. And the high has been right around almost 206, 205.85. That was back on December 3rd of last year. So quite the range. So we are actually kind of right in the middle of that range right now. And so obviously more room to run there on all things V-spikes as well. So intriguing stuff 
Let's go around the horn. Let's start in the Southern Volatility Mecca, sir. Obviously, a lot popping off. What's been lined up your tape as we have been revisiting the lows of June, sir? Yeah, it has been a uh, a day, huh? They have, um, you know, we saw the S and P futures. That what really kind of set us off was S and P futures breaking thirty seven hundred, um, and then you know, like you said, we did test the lows. S and P futures are hanging right around thirty seven hundred, thirty six ninety six. Um, that is causing Vol to to be pretty pretty juiced. Um, you know, we are in a full on uh, backwardation. And at least through the first three months, uh, that typically does not bode well for the market over a short period of time. And when you look at what the S&P is doing, uh, it does not look uh, particularly bullish right now. Um, would not be shocked if we saw some end of day thing, end of day selling or buying. But frankly, what we're looking at sets up for the kind of ugly Thursday, kind of kind of. Ugly Wednesday, ugly Thursday, really bad Friday, and then all out panic on on Monday. Uh, that is set up, and it'll be interesting to see whether that comes to fruition. Yeah, that's always the really spooky leg, right? If we really have the panic sell off on Monday, that's when that's when we see the vol pop. That's when we see the market really get spooked. We shall see. Will we hit the? Could is it possible, listeners? Can we see a four handle out there, a forty in uh, all things spikes and vix? Maybe if we see an aggressive sell off on Monday. We could certainly start threatening that again. That's, of course, the level a lot of people were looking for back in our initial polls. And we were asking you guys this a few months back. We said, hey, do we need VIX and spikes to really pop to signal some sort of capitulation out there? A lot of you said, yeah, we needed to get to around a 40 level. That's what you were feeling. So not quite there, but hey, heck of a lot closer now than we were a week ago. Uh, Luke, same question for you, sir. Obviously, we are seeing some pretty dire straits out there in the market today. Uh, revisiting, retesting those lows that we set back in June. What was lighting up your tape on this very red day on the screens today, sir? Yeah, you know, I <clears throat> I still think VIX or spikes are not high enough relative to the action in the market. And I still think in some weird way, people think the Fed put as in, hey, we'll stop raising. We're going to stop not that the market's down so much. We're looking at the U.S. dollar, and that's enough. It's a 20-year high, et cetera. Um, I think people think that's in play, and I'm not so sure about that. Uh, and I agree with the 40 handle. I mean, 30 with the kind of moves that we've been having? Uh, I don't know. As far as how it's going to set up for next week, a lot of crashes happen to happen on Mondays. Um, you know, bad Fridays, as Mark was saying, people rethink uh, over the weekend and you just want to get out on Monday or something. So we could see that. But volatility is is both on the upside and downside. And we all know how bear market rallies work. They uh, they rip your face off. So I would want to own some gamma going into next week. Uh, hard to say what's going to happen. I still think that spikes have to get in the high 30s, low 40s, and trade there for one or two days until we kind of see the bottom. Um, another measure we're using is we're looking at the 10-year, and I just think for every 100 basis points the 10-year goes up, the market's got to go down 6 7%. So I don't know how far the Fed wants to take it. They are way, way way behind. They have been for several years. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm blowing up on there. I think I must be over 70 followers. So I'm, I'm killing it on Twitter. Killing but, it, sir. Uh, Tearing it up. Yeah. I've been saying that for late for, for the last two and a half years. We, we've been, we'll behind. see if we can get you over 100 by the end of this show, sir. <laughs> that would be great. Um, they, it's a good thing I've got a time step on the stuff I've said, but this is a good thing about Twitter. That's, uh, but I just think we need to go higher. I, I think the spikes have to trade high 30s, low 40s, and has to do, trade there for a couple of days, and then it'll get interesting. But, you know, I don't know what Mark thinks, but still 30? I mean, it doesn't seem like it, seems like it should be higher. Interesting. That's been a point of contention, a point of debate we've had on the show for months now, is that, you know, do we need – that spike in vol to really signal the bottom. This been contentious. It sounds like you're coming down on the vote that yes, we do need it. 
And it's got to be at least north of 40, Luke, before you really be comfortable with levels in the market. Yeah, I think so. Interesting. Mark, that's been, again, a point of debates. People were thinking maybe this was a settled debate now when the market was rallying well north of 4,000 and VIX was kind of taking it on the chin. Maybe we had seen the low and we didn't, of course, see that pop. Now we are back down here again. Has it caused you to rethink your thoughts on that whole capitulation vol pop theory, sir? No, we're not. I don't think we're ever going to see 40. I got to be honest. Um, there's so much upside still in the complex. Um, you know, we could see 35. Maybe we touch 40 in a day at some point. Um, but it, but really, uh, this is about, uh, you know, this grinding move. I mean, we're down 2% today. That's a 30 VIX. Uh, and we've not moved, you know, realized volatility in the, S- in the SPX is not anywhere near uh, the levels that you would need to 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 really see things. We'd need to see, I think, a lot more of this. 20-day realized vol is about 25. Uh, and that includes that big, giant gap, 100-plus point move that we had on the 13th. When that drops off, realized vol is going to fall out of bed. Even 10, 10-day is at about 28. So uh, things are pretty fairly priced. But and I know we're going to talk about the options, but when the market is long, this much VIX upside uh, and long that much uh, long dated futures, uh, it is going to put a a damper on the VIX uh, until something truly breaks. And I don't know what is going to break, but you would need something we don't see coming uh, to, to really force VIX higher. And right now. Just because things are awful doesn't mean they're scared. They're they're going to bring fear, and so what we've got is a, you know, it, what we have is a market bracing to get punched, and that's why the it, that's already braced to get hit. Right? It's wearing football pads. It knows it's going to get tackled, but it's wearing a bunch. Of, it's wearing football pads, so it's not it, it's not scared the same way you might expect. So you're saying I should dump those VIX 40s I was loading up on while you guys were talking. I should just dump those out right now. No love for the VIX 40s. Uh, go, go long, especially if they're for next Wednesday. Yes, just, exactly. Just super long That's what I, I was – a couple of hundred I figured that was just, just to start with, you know, and then we'll, we'll go small from there. But you're right. We have seen VIX pop before. We have seen big VIX moves before, obviously. I don't know if we've seen VIX – moving up into this heavy of an upside open interest before. That is kind of a relatively unique scenario. So we're kind of treading into uncharted waters here, and that could very well, as you allude, have a bit of a damping effect. It certainly has already. Obviously, we have not seen the enormous upside moves that perhaps some folks thought were warranted, given what's been going on out there in the marketplace. Speaking of the options, let's get out to some of that business, some of that noise. Actually, before we even get into the options, listeners, Let's start in the land of the futures. Things are moving so much. We got to keep re-racking these futures all the time. We ran them right before the show. Obviously, things have changed. We just re-racked them again out here and coming into this portion of the show. As the meatball alluded to, we are pretty juicy, pretty backward in that front portion of the curve. And that usually spells, spells a little bit of trouble in the near term for the markets. Whenever the VIX futures curve is backwards, look out below. Here be dragons on the old market map out there coming into this this start of the segment here we have oc future up nearly two points about 1.9 points from where it was this time last week obviously september has rolled off the board so that is gone and november moving up into that second spot that's up almost a full point about 0.9 from where it was this time last week i'm sure if we re-racked it again right now it might be up that full point right now so things are moving and shaking rocking and rolling out there on the vix futures term structure uh, Mr. Luke, we'll start with you. A, how much attention do you pay to the VIX futures term structure over there at Equity Armor? And B, do you start to get those little hairs standing up on the back of your neck too when you see things starting to get backward in VIX futures, Lancer? Yeah, well, I pay a lot of attention to it. I watch the spikes. I watch. I also watch how some of these other instruments that are tied to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, so the spikes are trading SPKX, SPKY. I want to see. I want to see what the um, uh, uh, flows are in there. I want to see if if retail is getting nervous, if they're starting to buy them. The weird thing is with what Mark said, we could. I think we we could grind down another three, four hundred S and P points, and VIX might not break forty. Right? It'll just keep yeah. grinding lower and lower and lower. 
So I think that is possible, and I think that's what's been going on now. And I think, as both of you guys well know, there's been a every time there's a spike, there's there's sellers of front month uh, VIX futures. People come in and bang them out every chance they get. They they try to take advantage of it. One of these days, that's you know that probably is going to break. But again, um, I don't think the uh, I don't think the futures, the way I'm looking at them right now, really show that much panic yet. Um, and I think I kind of want to see that. The other thing is, if S and P gets down to 3,300 level, there's going to be some companies that have so much cash on the balance sheet, such a strong position, that it's time to buy and just close your eyes. Not the entire market, but but the strong names that you all know. Whoever's got the biggest balance sheet down there is is going to rule their industry. So um, I don't necessarily need the VIX to break 40, 50, whatever, to think that it's over. But I still think for what the market has done and what we see, the moves are are muted. And there isn't, as Mark said, real panic in, in, the, in the futures curve right now, the way you'd want to see it. Mr. Meatball, you concur with that? We're not seeing the true panic yet. We are backward, but we're not explosively so yet. You think we haven't really seen uh, the true panic in the VIX curve yet? Yeah, no, we have not. But, you know, we are backward, and that is usually a bad sign for the market. Uh, and we're seeing – the thing I'm watching is um, kind of credit spreads between high yield, uh, investment grade, and treasuries, and they are widening. Um, that is another – that coincides pretty well with VIX futures. Uh, if the credit market starts to freeze up, that is where we could see VIX really blow up. Um, that would be the only thing because – um, VIX futures are a very, very good way in a locked market to hedge basis risk. And that would be potentially a driver that could uh, could push. Uh, put If there was a scenario where VIX did get to 40, that would be it, is locked up credit markets and, and the credit markets needing to go to volatility to, to hedge themselves. Um, but right now, um, yeah, there, like, like I said, no panic, no fear. Uh, the, the market is wearing its uh, football, you know, football gear, and is ready to take the hit. But but the hit is but the hit is definitely coming. We just don't know whether it's going to be me tackling them or Roquan Smith. <laughs> we shall see. I wonder which one I would prefer. There, I don't know. Let's see. Let's go out to the realm of all things vol options. First off, nice to see. Options on the ETPs just launched, I think, yesterday as well. So we'll get to that in a second as well. We have the futures now. Things starting to tighten up. I know Weebull's offering them out there now. So it's nice to see, you know, the retail folks are really seeming to start to discover more spikes options out there. We're starting to see, you know, the things that make a healthy ecosystem, the 5, 10 to 20 lots trickling in more, which is always good to see. And we have a pretty interesting, (laughs) once again, a very interesting top 10 here for spikes options (laughs) <laughs> I'll read them off to hear your listeners and you could once you hear the strikes I think you'll be able to see where I'm where I'm going with this. Number 10 in Spike's options this week we have the Nov 160 puts. <laughs> Starts off with a bang. Number 9 the Ock 180 puts, number 8 the Ock 170 puts, number 7 the Ock 140 puts. So a nice healthy fun little put strip there in in Spike's then number 6 the comparatively reasonable Ock 70 puts. And then we flip the script. We've got the OC 24 calls at number four, the OC 21. So those comparatively reasonable, straightforward trades. Then we go back to the other side of the coin here. Number three, we have the OC 13 halves. Yes, the calls. And number two, the OC 11 calls. And the number one position that spikes options right now are the Nov 12s. I, <laughs> someone out there is really loving the deep in the money side of Spike's options right now for some very interesting reason. Luke, you are holding down the Myax hot seat this week, so I do believe you are legally obligated to explain this paper. Uh, have you noticed this? Have you been paying attention to Spike's options? And what are your thoughts on what is up with this, uh, just shall we put it, interesting, deep in the money uh, option paper in Spike, sir? Uh, it's hard to decipher what someone what someone has on the other side or whether they're RV. Again, arming it against another instrument. You got to remember that the SPKX, SPKY, which is 
uh, um, the ETFs that they launch, those have been trading. So sometimes it's if you see a little something, it's more efficient to buy the deep in the money and instead of the future, depending on where it's trading or you see someone who's offered or 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 uh, you can take advantage of some delta play. But you know, it's um, it's not really indicative of anything of uh, when it's that. That high of a delta, it's not indicative of a huge bet or not. You basically know what you're getting. Some of these other uh, strikes that you talk about, obviously they're trying to set up for some big move, hoping that it happens. We're just covering some risk, right? Um, I don't know if a lot of listeners at a retail know, but if they have a lot of wing risks, you can trade a lot more of the meat and the strikes that are a lot more popular. If you're an institution or if you're a hedge fund desk, Etc. It gives you a little more room to play around. So this insurance type stuff, buying the buying a lot of out of the money ones and just keeping them tends to be against other paper you're trading. Poor Luke, he has the unenviable job of, of trying to actually uh, explain some of this paper. <laughs> and the folks from you know the actual Myax folks and Spikes folks uh, have, have attempted to put a good spin on this. You're right. It is some shall we say interesting paper out there. Usually you see this kind of stuff. You people are trying to arb something or they're trying to take advantage of some sort of Vol discrepancy, some synthetics. <laughs> it's just interesting. Very interesting use cases emerging out here. It's always fun to see what use cases emerge from different products. And apparently right now for Spikes, the use case is deep in the money calls and puts, which is a, a deeply intriguing. Yesterday, we saw the Dece tens trading. These are actually in the weeklies. And the day before, we saw the OC 180 puts on the monthly. So yeah, just again, they continue to trade. Even coming into showtime, that is just uh, what maybe maybe Weebles out there hawking these to some retail people. I don't know what it is, but uh, these are not usually retail type trades, but uh, we've seen stranger things. Let's get on out to the land of VIX options out there, listeners. And you know what? A day like today is kind of tailor-made for a little bit of VIX paper, and that's pretty much what we're seeing out there right now. 630,000 contracts on the tape. In VIX land, listeners, the ADV also ticking back in the right direction, finally. Back north of 400,000 again. 401, to be precise, is up 14,000 contracts from last week. Things were looking pretty anemic last week and finally starting to get a little bit of light. Of course, maybe not the scenario everyone wanted for the volume, but hey, that's what kind of tends to drive volume in VIX land. We usually don't see huge VIX surges on happy days when the market's up 2 3%. Let's get on out to the land of VIX options. Let's look at the top 10 size positions out there. See what's dominating the tape. By the way, we are hanging out right now. Nine to one calls over puts. So only one put in the top 10 this week, listeners. So read into that what you will. Cost you only 138,000 contracts to break into the top 10 in VIX land. That is not a ton. That gets you to the OC 40s. Number nine, a buck 50 of the D's 70s. Number eight, a buck fifty-six of the October thirty calls. That's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much the most reasonable quote-unquote call on our list this week. Number seven, a buck seventy-nine of the Nove eighties. Number six, our first and only put in the top ten this week. One hundred ninety-nine thousand of the October twenty puts. Those are not looking that good. We recall talking about those on the show a while ago. Uh, that was kind of a bit of a flyer. We talked about. I think they bought those with futures. So in that case. They're very happy on the futures leg. I think they did them delta neutral. They're probably going to hope they did them one-to-one, I would think, in hindsight. But then again, still hanging out there, 200,000 of the OC 20 puts. Number five, 200,000 pretty much exactly as well of the March 75s. Number four, 206,000 of the October 75s. Number three, 206,000 as well of the OC 50s. So we're just lighting up all the call strips here, listeners. Number two, 229,000 of the NOB 70s. And holding out the top spot. In VIX options right now, 301,000 of the Nov 50s. So intriguing. It's not the 75 or above strikes that has been dominating it of late. It is the Nov 50s. Let's get on out to what's lighting it up out here today and indeed this week. Like we said, 630,000 contracts on the tape today. So nothing to sneeze at out there today. The big dog today, actually looking at some puts. We got 60,000 of the OC 25 puts going up and 40,000 of the OC 26 puts going up. So you got 100,000 contracts going up just in those two puts right there. Number three, we got 27,000 of the OC 30s. Number four, 20,000 of the OC 32 halves. And rounding out the top five today, 20,000 as well of the Feb 35s. So interesting. 
Not the strikes I expected, given everything we've seen out there of late. Usually these kind of days we're expecting to see the 75s, the pars, all sorts of weird stuff. Not the 25 puts and the 30 calls. That kind of paper is, dare I say it, somewhat reasonable for the kind of markets we're seeing out there today. Yesterday, also a pretty active day, 491,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the big dog yesterday was the OC 30s, 37,000 of those, followed by number two, 25,000 of the OC 24 puts. Number three, 20,000 of the October 30 puts. Number four, 20,000 as well of the October 42 halves. And rounding out the top five yesterday, 17,500 of the October 32 halves. Wednesday, also a decently active day, 438,000 contracts. The big dog on Wednesday, 71,000 of the October 23 puts. That is That is pretty sizable. Followed by a distant number two, 22,000 of the Oct 25 puts. Number three, 22,000 as well of the October 20 puts. Looks like a bit of a put spread going up there. Number four, 20,000 of the Oct 21s. And rounding out the top five on Wednesday, this is the kind of paper we've come to know and love in VIX now, listeners. 14,000 of the Nov 80s, our friends, the Nov 80s. Tuesday, also a pretty active day, 604,000 contracts. Until today, it was holding the flag for the most active day of the week. The big dog on Tuesday, 41,000 of the SEP 30s, followed by, of course, they're gone the way of the Dodo. Number two, 41,000 of the, what do we got, SEP 27s. So pretty much the SEP 30s, SEP 27s. I bet you they were wishing that they had a few more days on those contracts. <laughs> and then uh, number three, 33,000 of the OC 24 puts. Number four, 26,000 of the SEP 28s and rounding out the top five. On a pretty active Tuesday, 24,000 of the SEP 32 halves. Monday, also pretty active, over half a million contracts, 535,000. Uh, the big dog on Monday, listeners, uh, is 182,000 of the no 50s. Remember those? Those are our top open interest position out there. So obviously, perhaps our, our one by five friend may be deciding to move to a much lower strike or maybe someone else deciding to come play on the 50s. Either way, 182,000 going up on... Monday against, looks like 25,000 of the no 27. So perhaps a bit of that funky uh, ratio play going up there as well as also 23,000 of the no 27 puts. So that 27 strike was pretty active on Monday. 14,000 for number four of the SEP 20s and 13,000 for number five of the, excuse me, the February 20s and number five, 13,000 of the SEP 25 puts. Uh, Mr. Meatball, a pretty active week out there, all things considered, which is, why we're seeing our ADV finally start to move in the right direction. A lot of interesting trades going up this week. Funky spreads, interesting strikes, not as outlandish of a set of strikes as we're used to, except for, I think you can say these 182,000 of the no 50s on Monday surely came across your radar. What are your thoughts on those? And what else did you see this week in VIX options, sir? Yeah, that was a big one. They put up a, a ton of those and it was tied to futures. So it was not done on a ratio. Um, they did a delta neutral with, um, November futures. Very interesting. Um, that is that to me makes a lot more sense than some of these one by one by fives we've been seeing up in terms of uh, the ability of that one to end up uh, making them some money. Uh, but that is a a that was the obviously the whale of the week. Uh, just a huge trade. We continue to see VIX upside have massive open interest. Uh, you know when we look at October. Uh, there's still 200, there's 200,000 of the 50s, 200,000 of the 75 books open. You go to November, kind of the same story. We've got 230,000 of the 70s open, 300,000 of the 50s, 180,000 of the 80s. December, more of the same, uh, 150,000 of the 70s. January, uh, they're buying up. 100,000 of the 70s. You go to you go to March and you're going to see 200,000 of the 75s up. Uh there is just huge upside long exposure in this market. Uh brace again, bracing for um you know what what I think those are hedges against a locked market against a locked credit market. That is what that is. And uh you know we'll see whether those come into play. So I'm confused. It is possible to do trades other than the one by five in VIX calls right now. I, I'm, I, I didn't think so. that was That's possible. I did. It was a <laughs> pretty darn big trade. I like it. I like people taking other ways to tilt at that windmill. You know, my thoughts on that one by five is interesting. It's not my favorite, but it has a use case. But uh, nice to see other people attempting different different variations <laughs> on that that style of trading out there. 
Uh, Luke, obviously a lot going on in the world of VIX options this week. Obviously, that size print was the big dog there on Monday of the no 50s. We also have seen, you know, usually on this type of the show, on this time of the show, really, I'm talking about all the extreme call strikes that I've seen going up so far this week. We haven't really seen a lot of that this week, which is kind of interesting in and of itself. It's been, you know, OC 30s, OC 32s, OC 35s. These are high up strikes, but nowhere near the kind of extreme strikes we've been talking about. So what's been catching your eye out there in the realm of VIX options this week, sir? Well, we look, we look at the flows in, in those things, but to us, it's more about where things settle, where they end up settling the next day, whether they've, they've moved them around too much, especially the futures, right? Because we trade intermonth futures. We want to see we, what we try to do is, quote, buy cheap volatility and sell expensive volatility. So we like to see how those trades move the curves around, what, what the dealers are looking at. I don't know if some of this stuff is coming off ARBs and SBX. Uh, could be a desk just selling, as I said, again, upside calls so somebody else can trade some of the other instruments that they have and not have a uh, standard deviation risk out there. So they own that stuff. They own deep out-of-the-money calls or you know, fairly, fairly big out-of-the-money calls in the VIX or uh, and uh uh, other instruments, and then it lets them trade their book more actively uh, in the middle and the meet. So we look at it. It is it is important to know. You kind of think about it, but at the what what I want to do is sit there at the end of the day and see how it's moved the futures curves and what the market is expecting. Let's get on out to the land of the VIX ETPs. Big news this week, listeners. It happened just yesterday. We have our friends Spikey and uh, Sparks. Have we decided around Sparks? I don't know. SPKX and good old SPKY. Uh, coming into showtime, by the way, SPKX at about a 30 and three quarters. Spikey, good old Spikey at about a 33.60. So obviously looking, looking frothier this week. But we have options finally, listeners. It didn't take long at all. Just a couple of weeks for the options to be listed on. This is much faster than I assumed. So I happened to pull up a good old Sparks first here. Looks like the OC 27 puts are the trade du jour out there. Some folks liking themselves, some of those. And in good old Spikey, we have OC 45s and the OC 44s have traded out there. Spikey at about a 33, like I said, about a 33.60 right now. So all the money calls, that's pretty much the nature of the beast out there. But still fun to see options. So for all of you out there who have been waiting and asking, and we're going to get options on these things, there you go. They're out there. They exist. Again, these products are still kind of new, so I don't know how, how tight the markets are going to be yet, but intriguing stuff nonetheless. Luke, have you been paying attention to the ever-evolving world of Spikes ETPs, and, and what are your thoughts on these these new additions here? We got to SPKX and SPKY, sir. Yeah, uh, we've been paying a lot of attention to it. We've been looking at the way it trades against Spikes and other volatility instruments. And uh, we are going to be trading them. Uh, for us, it's a little bit of uh, getting the <coughs> back office and the operations all set up. And uh, right now, we're not worried about the cross margin of it. But we are going to be trading them. We have been taking uh, uh, a look at them and, and kind of getting ready for it. And I think the, the trading in these, in these instruments are, are going to pick up because sooner or later, the Fed you know, whether the Fed is raising rates or they're lowering rates, the Fed is still in the market. It's it's what's driving markets, whether it was up for 10 years straight, 12 years straight without cutting or whether it's down uh, what it's doing right now. So once the Fed kind of says, OK, I, I think I like markets where they are and vol normalizes, trades in a normal manner, it doesn't just go with what the Fed is doing. These instruments are going to be really interesting to watch and trade. Mr. Meatball, same question for you. I know you're holding on to that one lot of ever so precious good old sparks. How's that looking for you, A? And then B, what are your thoughts? The options are finally here, sir. Have you added a one lot of the options yet to your inventory? You know what? I'm looking and yeah, not a ton of open interest yet here, uh, but it's an interesting one. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll add a, a trade to make some open interest in, in spike here, spike X. Uh, what I like about Spike, about, about um, not Spikey, but uh, what did we decide on for the other one? Spark? I think Sparks. 
for, for lack of a better term. You can't call it spikes because that's already taken. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is the symbol there? SPK. SPKX. SPKX. Spanx? I mean, every lady loves their Spanx. Yes. yes, why not? Spanx, sure. That, that won't get us in trouble at all. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, and not a lot of, of, of volume yet. But, in fact, I'm looking. Spanx does not have any open interest yet. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to be the first one to put open interest on it. So I am going to buy. You'll Well, you'll know what I buy when it prints. Let's see Uh-oh. what happens. Let's here. see the size go through. You will be the, the sum total of the open interest out there. You'll be trading with yourself. It'll be good stuff out yeah, there. Yeah, give, give, give us a few weeks. Once the operational stuff gets started, we'll – Oh, we'll I'm excited. Yeah. I'm, oh, I, I'm excited. Oh, you know what? There is open interest. There's, there's a five lot. There's a five lot. Of the Oct 27 puts, yes. Yes. So you can trade with that person. You can trade with that person. You two could be trading back and forth, trading it up for size. Our listeners, hey, listen in the live chat. Get out there. Tear up the OI. You two can be uh, the size OI players out there in Sparks and Sparky. Sparks and Sparky goes kind of well together. If you have an alternate suggestion for SBKX listeners, you folks are a creative bunch. Send it in. Let us know. Let's get on out to SVIX. This one, obviously, not exactly fearing that well today. It was at about an 11 when we kicked off the show. Puts it down about three quarters of a point. As we are right now, it's at about a 1080, so even lower. Closing in on being down a full point. Actually seeing some volume today, which is kind of the first time in a while. Over 1,000 contracts on the tape today. I mean, the ADV is only 830, so it takes this kind of day, I guess, listeners, to get some paper out there in good old SFIX. Let's just look really quickly and see. What is trading it up out there in SVIX? It's the Deese 11s have done 200 contracts, and the Deese 12 puts have done 145, and the Deese 12 calls have done 110 contracts. So that's where the lion's share of the paper is. The OC 13s have also done 95 contracts out there today. So that's where a good chunk of that 1,000 contracts is coming from. But again, for many reasons out there, it seems like, Good old SVIX, not really blowing the doors off out there. What is doing some paper, though, these days is good old UVIX. And coming into showtime today, it was doing the same. When we kicked off the show, it had put up over 6,000 contracts already. And as of right now, it is up to 11,000 contracts out there. So that's some paper going up in UVIX. By the way, UVIX, when we kicked off the show, 1260 up about 1.4. As we're coming into this segment, at about a 1286. So that puts it up about 1.65 or so on the week. Uh, So an interesting week here for all things UVIX. Of course, that is our levered friend out there, listeners. And the ADV is surprisingly enough down. It's down 500 contracts to about 6,300 contracts. I have a feeling it's going to change after today's action. Let's do a quick top five out here in terms of positions in UVIX. Number five, we got the Jan 15 puts, 1,000 of those, followed by number four, also 1,000 of the D11 puts. Uh, number three, 1,200 of the October 12 calls. Number two, 1,700 of the Oct 12s. And the number one size position in UVIX right now, 2,012 of the Dece 18 puts. Remember I said we're at about a 1,285 or so right now, listeners. So interesting stuff out there. Uh, Luke, have you been paying attention to our inverse friends or our inverse friend SVIX and our levered friend, Uvix, and what are your thoughts of these ETPs and what they're putting up out there these days, sir? Uh, yeah, I've been attention, paying attention. I look at all of the, I look at the entire complex, but, you know, I, I, I don't know. The, um, I want the correlations to be, to be a little bit better, and I, I look at the contracts that, that go up, but um, I don't trade them that much. You, uh, we used to... But not as much now. Right now, we're just into, into the pure instruments. Are you surprised at a prop like SVIX for all the headlines it generated? Everyone was gnashing Shocked. their teeth over the return yeah. of an inverse VIX product, and yet it hasn't really lit the world on fire. Does that surprise you? Yeah, I know. No, I'm not surprised. I'm shocked. But, you know, uh, it, is, it is what it is. It is what it is indeed. Speaking of what UVIX is right now, the big trade out there today, I said there's about 11,000 contracts on the tape right now, 1,060 of the OC 11 puts. Remember I said UVIX hanging out right around a 1280 or so. So the OC 11 puts, that's the big trade out there, followed by 500, almost 600 of the SEP expiring next week. So the 30th, 13 calls, 
550 of the OC expiring on the 7th, 18 calls, and then 500 as well of the SEP expiring on the 30th, 13 half calls. Uh, all that opening business out there today. Uh, Mr. Meatball, I know you haven't really been playing a lot in SVIX, but I know UVIX has been on your radar more. What's lighting up your tape out there this week in UVIX, sir? Yeah, yeah, it's trading. Uh, it's busy. I am. Uh, I went long some 12 and a half calls this morning, and those are starting to pay off. Uh, if you want a day trade, UVIX is awesome uh, because, it, like I said, it's, it moves. Uh, UVIX is up about 10%. Uvixi, Uvix, Uvix, Uvxy is up about ten percent. Uvix is up fourteen. So it is um, doing its job and uh, blowing higher, and uh, it's a fun one to trade. I'm I, now. I heard a little rumor, speaking of which, that Vx they were starting to do creation units again in Vxx because um, I'm looking at it and it's actually moving the way it's supposed to move today it's actually making uh, sense oh that <laughs> okay yeah i mean what is uh have you heard any any news on on uh vxx either of you and and what why it's starting to normalize it's not it doesn't seem to be trading uh far away from any v anymore you no know, it's funny i had finally washed my hands of it i had finally expunged it from all of our data i thought it was easy we could uh, have a clean break from vxx you're telling me they're going to drag me back in now i gotta start watching it again every time you get out they drag you back yep. in just like the godfathers i have not heard that i will check into that though because you're right i had kind of tangentially noticed it on a few other shows even though i tried to avoid it whenever possible i did notice it did seem like it was starting to behave i won't say entirely rationally but less irrationally that it had in the past and so that i was kind of wondering about that but i didn't want to go back down that rabbit hole so i had not investigated it but alas it sounds like i shall have no choice now i'm going back down the the vxx rabbit hole ubxy listeners everyone's asking for the reverse split well you ain't getting it today because the market's bringing it for you it was at 1180 when we kicked off the show that's up almost a full point about 0.9 it's at about a 12 right now so that's up over a point right now up about 1.1 points out there so if we're north of a 10 handle, you ain't getting a reverse split, I'm sorry to say. And UVXY putting up some numbers today, 394,000 contracts. Getting back some of those old days when, you know, VXX used to trade more than VIX, and now UVXY threatening to take that mantle. Uh, the ADV, surprisingly enough, is also down on the week, about 1,000 contracts to 279. So got a feeling that's going to change after today's paper. Really quickly, what are the top positions in UVX, why we're coming up against it. Let's do a top two really quickly. 22,000 of the SEP 10 puts and number two, 20,000 of the SEP 11 calls. Both of these expiring today. Again, we are kind of a little bit away from those strikes right now, but wait five minutes in UVXY and you can see all kinds of fun stuff. In terms of what's printing out there today, it's all SEP 11 halves. Listeners, 26,000 of the 11 half calls, 25,000 of the 11 half puts. So as we've been vacillating around this 11 half strike they've been putting up some numbers out there that's 50,000 of today's paper right there right behind it we have 24,000 of the SEP 12s number four 19 almost 20,000 of the SEP 11s rounding out the top five today 19,000 those are 11 puts by the way the 11 calls have done about 19,000 contracts as well again all of that going the way of the dodo today so a lot of fast and furious action as we tend to see around UVXY, around these uh, these expiration days. And we're seeing that yet again today as we keep on rolling. Listeners, we had some hot and heavy earnings popping off this week, including uh, Mr. Meatball's favorite Darden restaurants popping off before the bell earlier this week. On the 22nd, 131 and a quarter is where it was going into its announcement. They were pricing in 5.1%, and they delivered exactly 5% listeners. Let's see where it's hanging out right now. It's at 121 and a quarter now, though. So once again, that frame of reference thing comes into play, listeners. We take these screenshots and snapshots right in the immediate post-earnings blush. Of course, if you wait a session or two, things can change. In this case, Darden Restaurants is down exactly $10. It was 131 and a quarter. Now it's 121 and a quarter. It's down another 416 today or 3.3%. So they are coming for those breadsticks. Not giving any love at all. So one of those cases, if you had some long earnings vol and you held on to it, you're looking a little bit better today than you were immediately after the announcement when it did a whole heck of a lot of nothing. Of course, Costco was after the bell uh, yesterday as well. They're kind of one of the few rays of light out there in the market today. It's our chat earlier. I saw them talking about uh, getting gas for below four bucks at Costco now. How exciting that is. They also put out, if you want to grasp at some 
some silver linings in this market right now. The Costco CEO did affirm listeners that they are keeping the $1.50 soda and hot dog combo in perpetuity, potentially forever. So, Mark, you could be 100 years old and roll into your Costco on your hover chair wheelchair at that point and get your buck 50 hot dog and soda if you like. So if you're looking for a ray of light on this kind of all red day, there you go. Soda and hot dogs, buck 50 at Costco in perpetuity as we keep on rolling, listeners. It is time to get difficult. It is time to get dangerous. It is time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. Uh, Mr. Meatball, I see your one lot of the Oct 27 puts here in good old Sparks. Uh-huh. 95 cents. I like that one. I like it. All right. How's that sitting for you so far? You liking it? Oh, yeah. Let's play the fade. Let's play the Let's fade. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it. So there you go. You too can join the meatball. Get in on that hot, hot action out there in the land of the Sparks. Uh, really quickly, we're coming up to the end of our question of the week right now. So I'll just pay it off because we got to do our whole crystal ball fun thing. We asked you this week. Seems like, given the feedback we got on our show, Options Bootcamp, maybe, potentially, we are in the middle of a quote-unquote iron condor renaissance. Uh, This strategy, if you've been around the business for a bit, you know it was super hot over a decade ago. I would say close to when we launched the network, which was 15 years ago. Everyone and their mother was trading iron condor, super hot. They seem to have cooled off. But the question we asked is, are they making a comeback? We gave you four choices. Yes, I am trading iron condors. No, I prefer iron flies. No, I prefer butterflies. Or they never went away. They've been hot all this time. And right now, coming into the final couple of hours of the poll, listeners, 45.8% of you are saying, yes, I'm trading iron condors, followed by no, with exactly a third, 33.3% saying, no, I prefer butterflies. 12.5% of you say they never went away. They've always been hot. You've been trading them all this time, 15 plus years. And no, I prefer iron flies, 8.3%. Get in there. If you're listening on the podcast, you might be out of luck. I think by the time this podcast goes live on the network, the poll will be. That's why you got to listen live. Theoptionsider.com slash pro. Get in there. And you should always be checking at options throughout the week to see what our question of the week is this week. All right, let's go around the horn. Let's look at our vol prognostications this week. By the way, come in to the end of the show. Spikes at almost a 31, 30, 94. And we've got our old friend Vix, if it refuses to play ball. There we go. Same level, about 30, 93 out there. So Spikes and Vix both hanging out at about the same level. Alas, none of us had a 30 handle. I was the highest yet again at 2635. Uh, Mr. Meatball was looking at his palindromic fade of 2442. Tom Jark from Myax was at a 2503, kind of in the middle there. Alas, no joy. I've got our listener who took his Packers Bears guess, 2814, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, <laughs> or 2710, whatever, whatever his guess was, for the, whatever the final score of the game was. That was looking good yesterday, not as good today. Uh, no one else. Oh, Nichols is at a 29, so he's looking a little bit better. So you're closer than the rest of us, Nichols. So ballyhoo for you. But alas, no listener winners this week as well. So that means, Luke, you get the dubious honor of going first, sir. What do you feel for this time next week? Where is Val going to be next week, sir? Uh, it's hard to say what Powell's going to do or not going to do, whatever, but probably the way they've been selling prop month, I still think it'll stay elevated. I'll say spikes will be around 27 and a half. Ah, I just wrote my number down right before you were talking, sir. You said 27 and a half. And alas, it is close to you. I'll just give you my number, I guess, now then, because you already gave yours. I wrote down 27 and a quarter right before you said that. So we're, we're going to be neighbors this week, Luke. So let's, nice. see, let's see how it works out for us. So Mr. Meatball. We've already got a market, 27 and a quarter, 27 and a half. <laughs> you want to split the uprise there or you want to do some palindromic nonsense for us? Well, you know I'm going to do palindromic nonsense because why not? Um, it is on brand for you, sir. Yeah, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to go crazy. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to say 41-14. Oh, that was close. That was close. I'm doing 38-83. Oh, okay. Close, close, but no cigar. 38-83. For the meatball, let's just see what our chat is up to. 25 half. Oh, we got a 32 in there. Nichols was close this week. He's feeling a 30 handle. I could certainly see that. Uh, 29 for the queen. She has been very prescient over the past year. Can she get it this week? We shall see. Listeners, if you're listening on demand after the fact podcast, send 
your guesses in for VIX and Spikes next week via the questions at theoptionside.com. You can do it via social media as well. We will tabulate up all the results. And if you're within our margin of victory, it's pretty tight. We're very demanding, tenth of a point. Then you too can win some fabulous prizes. All right, everybody. Unfortunately, that music means we have come to the end of another hour-long sojourn through the world of volatility. Hopefully, we could hold your hand, walk you back from the ledge, the precipice, on a crazy day like today. But before we go, Mr. Luke, if folks are intrigued, they want to learn more about all things Equity Armor, where should they go? What should they do? They should go to our website, uh, www.equityarmorinvestments.com. Um, look at some of our blogs, download our free book. And if you have any questions, just reach out. There you go. Check them out over there at Equity Armor. You can give them a follow on the old Twitters as well at Luke underscore Rabari, R-A-H-B-A-R-I. See if we can get them up over 100. Do the fellow a favor out there. And Mr. Meatball, sir. If folks want to check out all the cool ball stuff you have cooking, maybe discuss your one lot in Sparks. Where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, go to optionpit.com. I write a free blog every day on VIX and volatility. Uh, it's called the VIX Edge. Make sure you read it every day. You'll be a ha- uh, the volatility edge. Um, you're going to be a happy camper if you do, because I will help you make some money. Uh, optionpit.com. Optionpit.com is the place to go. And of course, you know where to go to learn more about all things spikes. Myaxoptions.com slash spikes. You got the data there. You got links, all sorts of cool stuff, including shift search and quick strike for equities. If you want deep dives and some great free research and analytics tools for your options trading and vol analysis, it's all right there completely for free. Can't beat the price. Kick off your journey, myxoptions.com slash spikes. For all of you on the on-demand side, that is going to conclude your broadcast week with us. I want to thank you for joining us and spending your time with us this week, whether you're hiking or working out or commuting or at your desk or trading, whatever it is you do while you're listening to the show. We thank you for taking some time to do just that. Remember, if you like what you hear, keep rating and reviewing. And of course, if you don't want your broadcast week to end, you want to talk about all the mad, unusual activity going on this week. But spoiler alert, it's a lot. Head on over to theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Whatever you do, do not go to slash secret club. That is not for you. And you can sign up there and get access to all the cool stuff we do, including options oddities coming up a little bit after this show. Then, of course, we're back again next week with another great slew of content all the way through to next Friday, another episode of Volatility Views. Stay safe out there, everybody. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>